So in this one, we're going to take a look at uh, what has changed over the course of Laravel 10 with the whole creating a new project. So if you followed some of the videos on the channel, you'll see that uh, we were using brew. So this is the command that I'm just using. This is homebrew. If you're not familiar with homebrew, do check out one of the videos on the channel and get caught up. What we want to do is we want to type in brew doctor. Let's try that first. And what that will do, it'll check if there's anything, you know, any warnings or formulas that are deprecated or anything like that. So in this case, I'm just going to leave this one where it is. But the next step after that would be like brew update. Now you might have a bunch of other things besides this. If you haven't ran homebrew in a while, you haven't updated or you haven't actually kept up with your taps or kegs. So I'm going to do brew upgrade. And then after that, I'm going to run brew outdated. So this will just kind of check and see what kegs are outdated if there are any. And if you do have outdated kegs, it will tell you how to update that. And then once you're done all your updates, you can provide a brew cleanup. And what that will do is we'll clean up anything that is sitting cached in your library and just needs to be removed. Also on this channel, we taught you how to use valet and you'll know if you have valet installed and it's working correctly when you type in the command valet over here. And there's a specific command that we're going for. If you say valet on latest version, you can check to see if you're on the latest version. If you don't have the latest version of valet, you can do a composer global require. And what you're going to require is Laravel valet. You can also do the same thing for Laravel. This will get you up to the latest version of Laravel in this case, 10.2. Now that we finished our housekeeping, we can get into the install process. So depending where you place your projects or your code, in this case, I place mine under this directory called projects for this channel. Now I do use aliases and there is some videos in the terminal series on aliases and stuff like that if you guys wanna get familiar. Here's a subset of some of the aliases that I use. So I'll use certain words that will replace typing out a larger subset of characters or strings. So it's up to you. You can type out the full commands or you can use something like this. So when you want to create a new project, the command is Laravel new, and then you would type the name of the project you'd like to create, whatever the app is called. It'll generate a PHP framework scaffold for you and your Laravel project will be good to go. So in this case, I have an alias. I'm just going to type in app Laravel. So the app that I'm going to create is Laravel. So right out of the box, it asks if you want to create a new Laravel starter kit. So whether you're using Inertia, Breeze, or Laravel Jetstream, or no kits, you can choose whatever you like. In this one, I'm gonna choose Laravel Jetstream. And then the next process, it asks what stack we'd like to choose, right? So if you're using Livewire, you can choose Livewire. If you're using View and Inertia, you can choose this one. So this is actually also nice. It asks if you want any support features. You can leave this blank or not check anything, but I'm just gonna follow through with these two sets. This is quite possibly one of my favorite little sub features here, because initially when you were setting up a Laravel project, you'd have to set up PHP unit, pest or something along those lines, such as insights or any other like code quality uh, checks that you wanted to do with the project. So in this case, I'm going to pick pest. Now this is just also another gift here. So I'll just say yes. And then it starts creating the scaffolding or creates your project, installs all the necessary packages. And just when you think it's almost done, it's not quite there yet. So once the application key is created, that's on your .env file, it then asks, which type of database your application would use. So in our case, we're just going to use MySQL. So I'm going to hit enter. So once again, I'm going to use a quick alias here and I'm just going to get PHP storm to open up that project. What's interesting is if we go to our .env file, because the project is called Laravel, it assumed that's going to create a database called Laravel here and default user root and then a password. This is good, but it actually hasn't done that work for you. So you still need to create a database or a data set and then provide a username and a password to have that plumbing hooked up for some of the other features to work. If we clear this, let's just get inside of our project because we also chose to add a get init at the beginning of the project. It also made a commit for us and a bunch of commits. And I will show you what that looks like. It made an initial commit here. And so it just set up a fresh Laravel app and then it installed Jetstream. So now that we're inside of our project, if we do a quick list, but because we didn't set up the database or because it didn't actually set up a database for us, if we run the things like pest and we try to make sure our tests are passing, we'll see that all of our tests failed. And the reason that they failed is because we don't have a data set for uh, pest to run some of these tests against. So I'm going to go ahead and do that behind the scenes and then we'll run pest again. And as you can see, this is really easy and you set up your database and now all your tests are passing. So now you can do some test driven development while you build your app out and it's just all set up for you right out of the box, which is really nice and a big time saver. 
And not only that, if you're using Laravel Valet, you can just jump into a browser and it will generate your project and it will show up here. And you can see that you're using whatever version of Laravel plus whatever version of PHP and you have your scaffolding built out. Remember we chose dark mode, so therefore we now have this dark version that is set based on what your system settings is set for. And we can log in, you know, create a user. So this process works exactly the same as it would for if you went through the whole process again and you chose viewer inertia or something else. Now, there is a couple of caveats, some things that I found that was kind of a little bit different. So depending on the version that you're choosing, so I'm at 8.2.10 or 10.2.1. And if I was to go to the actual project, in this case, I'm just on the welcome plate. So what I did here was I just went through the project here, resources, welcome. This is the initial scaffold for uh, the Jetstream template. Now you have layout files and a bunch of other things. And I will go around the channel and actually create some more in-depth Laravel tutorials so that you guys can get up to speed. So we jump to our composer.json. You will see these are the things that got installed and what was required. And in this case, Laravel 3 was required and PEST was required and a few other things. Now, if we were also to check out our, and we're looking for a particular file, we're looking for the package.json file. And you will see these are the things that got installed. So Vite has been installed, Tailwind has been installed, and a bunch of other plugins that is required for the project to work and generate some of the scaffold content as well as some of the styling. Now you can update these. If you wanted the latest version of say Tailwind, it's pretty much as easy as running npm install Tailwind CSS at latest, and this will generate the latest version of Tailwind. And you can go back here and check and you'll see that this gets updated to whatever version. Now, if you take a look at app layout, for instance, and then we go here and we just click through and we go to the actual application layout template, you'll see that it pulls in Vite scripts here. So when you build out your actual project, say you're inside of terminal and you wanna do an NPM run build, this is what it's doing. It builds the manifest for you and that runs and compiles all of the things that you need for your application to run, including Tailwind, updated version of Vite and whatever dev dependencies you have. Now I did use an alias there, so it's just npm run build, there's npm run dev, and there's npm run watch. If you're missing the watch protocol part of that, you can simply add that inside of your package.json file. So if we go here, you can just add this up here inside the build directory. And it's, it's pretty easy as just adding, you could say, let's see here, we could say we can call it watch, and then we can say, um, I guess we say beat preview. Nope, I'm sorry. We wanna do a build. So we'll do beat build, two dashes, watch. What this will do now is if we're inside of here or building our application and I do something like npm run watch, um, it's gonna keep an eye on any changes that are happening inside of my actual project. And I'll do that command again because once again, I'm using aliases, but it's npm run and it's watch. I don't like to type out the whole thing, so I just make little short acronyms that I can remember. So it does exactly the same thing. So if we were to go back into our project and we go to, let's say, the welcome file, and inside of here we have some default HTML, we could just go grab this, remove it. So what that would look like, oh, actually I wanted to show you that. I went a little fast there, but that actually just builds out. So when I leave or I change focus from the IDE, it'll build this out. And if we go back to our homepage, we'll see that the initial Laravel items are actually gone. I just wanna say this is a much easier process to setting up a Laravel project, picking the pieces that you want, the features, adding the components, initializing a Git repository, and adding a data set to that and you're ready to get going with whatever project you want to create. All right, guys, stick around for the next one. We're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the functionalities and things around Laravel. 